The Ozobot is an inexpensive and simple robot that can be programmed in several different ways. So what I would like to do here is to demonstrate uh, how a couple of these coding techniques work. Here you see the Ozobot. It's, uh, it's pretty small. And it has some built-in capabilities. Um, it will follow a, a line. And so this is one of the um, pre-established uh, tracks, I guess you would call it, that uh, comes with the Ozobot. And in addition, it will interpret color patterns in the line as signals to do different things. So turn right, speed up, slow down, those kinds of things, reverse direction. And you might think of this as a simple form of programming. So you can create something or use something that's already been created to explain to this little robot what you would like it to do. Now, you don't have to rely upon the um, tracks provided by the company. You can also create your own. Um, here's a rather elaborate um, track uh, created by one of our grandchildren. Uh, and, you know, it's actually quite large relative to the size of the um, Ozobot. And the idea is that the Ozobot would just kind of follow this track throughout this uh, um, Lego whatever <laughs> town. Uh, it worked pretty well, actually, uh, with the exception of we didn't understand um, the limits of running into the next little sheet of paper. And it would go fine as long as it was going uh, um, away from the overlap. But when it ran into the overlap, it would stall out. So this is, a, I guess, a form of bug that we encountered when uh, trying to uh, use the uh, little robot in, in this fashion. Here is the interface for Ozo Blockly, and this is the uh, setting from my iPad in which um, I can code, I guess you would describe it that way. Uh, a couple of things to note here, Ozo Blockly, or Blockly, which is a Google product, um, offers the opportunity to learn some basic coding uh, concepts, you might say, using the organization of, of uh, these blocks of information r rather than the normal uh, text-based approach that you would use when, when, when writing code. And these blocks are pre-generated to... Uh, execute certain coding concepts. So I've started on a little program here by arranging these blocks. And if you look closely, uh, you can kind of see what it does. So you have uh, essentially a loop here that uh, that's the, the kind of a, a bluish color um, block that contains the other code at this point. And... Uh, as you see, there is a variable built within the loop that I can change. And right now, I'm going to repeat the other commands within this loop uh, four times. It's going to cycle through these commands four times. The uh, first command in the loop, as you can see, uh, is a movement command, and it... Uh, moves the Ozobot forward, um, forward is an option here, a, a certain distance that I can set, and I have set it at four steps, and it's going to do so at a speed that I can set, and I have it set to medium. So these 
Um, within the move command, there are multiple internal uh, characteristics or variables that can be set. Following that forward movement, I'm going to uh, rotate uh, the Ozobot to the right and rotate, in this case, is a 90 degree change of direction. And following that, just so I can kind of watch the, uh, the Ozobot go through its, uh, its program, I'm going to pause uh, for a second. Now, if, if you think about what I've asked the o Ozobot to do, it's, it's essentially to, to, to draw a square. Go forward, turn right. Go forward, turn right. Go forward, turn right go forward, turn right, which would bring it back to its starting point. Now, just to kind of show you how this works, um, this, this coding technique, the, uh, the other thing I might do is just, just add a couple of things. And let's say I kind of want to uh, celebrate my accomplishment here so that uh, when the Ozobot has uh, gone through the um, movements of generating a square, uh, I'm going to have it uh, uh, to generate uh, fireworks. Now, all that means in this setting is that it will uh, light up uh, in various hues the Ozobot. So I just add this to the, uh, the program that I've written this far. And so now uh, I've completed what I want to do. Um, draw a square, and then uh, celebrate our accomplishment by, uh, by setting off some, fire, some fireworks. So we're going to try to give you an idea of how this works. So here you have my iPad, and I've put the Ozobot on top of Ozobloccoli as it appears on my iPad. And you see I set the Ozobot down on one of these areas and I'm transferring the program into the, uh, into the Ozobot. And it does so by uh, these light patterns which uh, the Ozobot is uh, capable of, uh, of storing. And so the program now is being fed into the Ozobot. You can see the indicator moving across here. And we'll just let this go now. And uh, as soon as it's done, we'll see if the, uh, the program will run. Um, it's important to kind of get a, a sense of scale here and the actual size of the uh, Ozobot. It's pretty small. So I set it down. There it's drawing a square, and it should now set off the fireworks. And there you go. That's uh, a simple program written in Ozo Blockly.